Do you know what we're talking about in segment one? We are talking about a, yep, the the role-playing game. is Now, wait, is this role-playing game based on the movie or the movie based on the role-playing game? The role-playing game is based on the movie. The movie came out in 1977, I think, and the role-playing game came out in 1992. There you go. Then we are talking about a little bit of both. Yes, um, and just to refresh myself, I watched the movie again earlier this week. I asked Heathen Dog to do so. He failed me. I failed you. I have not, I've never seen the movie. The Torg, God, I haven't seen the original Torg. There's a new Torg coming out, but I haven't seen the original Torg since the 90s. I played it a couple times. That game was crazy. Um, so, all right, so what we're going to be talking about, uh, let me get my notes here, and uh, I'll get set up, is we're going to be talking about, so normally, we don't talk about games out of print. I'm not saying we never will or never have, but we don't normally talk about games out of print. And the I reason, reference them. Reference it, but we, I mean, what I'm saying is we don't go over them, you know, in depth. Because, right. at least in my mind, I don't necessarily want to go over a game you can't buy. You can't get. At least not legitimately so. And before anybody thinks that I stole it from the Trove or some crap, there you go. I own the book. I've owned the, I've owned the book since... I don't know if... I think it was on Andrews. I think it was with you guys. Uh, uh, so it was around 96, 97 when I bought it. Mm. But... Uh, all right, share my screen. And, oh, Heathen Dog, you're going to do a little role-playing today. I didn't tell you about that. Surprise! No, you didn't. Yeah, surprise. Okay. Am I, am I going to be the, the uh, French flamer? Yes. That we just rolled up, the, the NPC that we just no, rolled up? You, a little later on, we're going to have a little choose-your-own-adventure thing. Oh, good. And uh, you'll get some options, and you'll get to pick which option, and I have a dice roller ready to go. Sweet. Not the same one you used. If you want to use oh. yours, you'll have to send me a link to it, but uh, um, if it's quick to set up. But other than that... It is not. Okay, I've got... Uh, there we go. So we're going to talk about Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. And, God, I wish Heathen Dog would have watched the movie, because I want to kind of talk a little bit about that as well. Like, I, Well, you this can. Is, this is a movie that I... No, no, no. It's... it's you have to see it, man. Well, I... <laughs> the themes I, from, in the movie... From what you described, mm -hmm. from what you described, I imagine it is a mixture of the original heavy metal... And the 1970s cartoon version of uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, I can see that. I, I don't give it the heavy metal vibe, but but I mean, at the same time, I, I I'm can talking, understand. I'm talking that. art wise. Yeah, it's the same. It's same for Zeta art. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> the history of this, I actually was going to skip some of the history. So let's uh, let's you know, let me swap these screens so I'm not always looking to the side. Da, 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 da. Oh, Inception. Oh, God. Oh, I knew it was coming. Oh, oh crap. I, I'm sharing it that way, aren't I? <laughs> I, forgot I, I forgot I was sharing the screen and not the... Uh, <laughs> not the. I was doing it the easy way because I'm going to have to flop between some things. Okay, that's over there. That's back here. I want to full screen you temporarily. I can F11 you later. We'll share you back. Share screen. Just going to do the screen. Boom. All right. So... The history of this is essentially, and I'm, for our degenesis people who don't like how Heathen Dog presented the, the palers, this is a million foot over you. I'm overviewing this goddamn thing from the moon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's still going to be somebody. That, no, I, I swear to God, though, I, I really like that YouTube commenter because apparently he hit the the palers are his favorite cult because i loved when he said that you you presented them how all the other cults would see them but not properly i'm like <laughs> i'm like but that's how i would that, that is the that is the satellite overview that is how you would be presenting them and i understand that but but uh he not only had the uh the the knowledge of the book that we were referencing but all the supplemental books as well right yeah oh. exactly yeah so yeah, I didn't so want to like you know, dude. I I I didn't want to I didn't want to I didn't want to shit on his on his parade or anything because I'm really happy that that uh, that he he's into the book so much and the palers in particular. That's great, but man, you gotta you gotta step back. Don't 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 get hurt because you know <laughs> I didn't go super in depth into one. I tried to keep them all to 15 minutes or less, and I more or less succeeded. Right? No, I, you yeah. did a good job. You did a good job. <laughs> I just thought it was a good comment. Sorry, funny comment. So, do you remember when I played in a Champions game and I had my Goo Gun character? Yes. Okay, that Goo Gun character is named after this guy right here. Really? Yes. Well, okay, his original name, Necron99, not his taken name later, Peace. Okay, 
So anyway, Ralph Bakshi's Wizards. The quick version of the history, the 10 million foot view of this one, is that Earth went through an atomic war. Sure. It's 19, remember, this was done in 1977. Okay? So, what what was the main uh, fear then? Nuclear war. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, 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 the people who are in their 20s and 30s now, well, now as in 1977, um, probably still, still, uh, you know, the whole duck and cover thing yep. that they are taught in school is probably fresh, you know? Yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's going to affect what they write. All right. And the art in this book is very similar to art that you'd find in, uh, in books of the era with the combination of actual characters from the movie and so forth. So I am not going to go over this history. Just know that it is because you can watch the movie <laughs> like it's based on the movie um, where, wait, uh, where can you watch the movie i uh, i own it so i mean i'm guessing you can watch on amazon prime you're guessing well let's i'm, I'm gonna go and find out well okay. while, while you continue i'll okay. find out where they can watch the movie. so it's two million but the but the world's two million years in the future and the world is broken in between two concepts magic and technology technology has some limitations the more technological it is, it just doesn't really work. It breaks down because the magic takes over. So basically, they're on par. So as more powerful magic becomes harder to use, you can get complications with it. Well, higher technology is. So coincidentally, it's around 1940s era technology. Who do you think the bad guy is going to be? 1940s era it sounds like Nazis. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I had a comment here. Page nine. Oh, I guess I'm skipping to page nine. Um, these are quotes from characters in the in the movie, and this is pretty much how the movie looks. So, uh, but it gives you it gives you the general history here. If you've seen the movie, you know I'm glossing over like everything. But again, you can go watch the movie. So, what is a role playing game? What are dice for? It, you know, typical stuff that you'd find in a book. So, let's start at uh, the beginning of characters. So, creating a character in this game, this is not Dungeons & Dragons. Not even for 1992 Dungeons & Dragons. This is its own system. You'll see a lot of similarities, but it's not Dungeons & Dragons. First of all, you roll low, or you want to roll low. Secondly, uh, it's done by a point system for creating your character. I would say it's, uh, I don't know what it's similar to. It's got, it's got facets of a bunch of different games that I've played. But uh, you spend points on advantages, disadvantages, attributes, and so forth to create your character. Because you can't buy the game, I am not going to go in-depth with 18 combat examples and so on and so forth. I'm just giving you an idea of what Ralph Bakshi's Wizards, the RPG, is about. Oh, uh, the other thing I want to say, uh, what precipitated me talking about this is Grim mentioned it on one of his videos. He was talking about uh, Chult from Venture. Uh, which is a Gonzo, uh, uh, it's a Gonzo game. Mm -hmm. And uh, he mentioned Wizards. I was like, you know what? I've been threatening it for, since we started this. And I've showed it to people and so forth. And they're usually like, oh my God, that's a role-playing game. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm PCSing soon. I'm not going to be able to do these videos for a couple of months. While I have no lengthy uh, discussion topic, like an, uh, a real game to go over and so forth, I was like, I got to bring it up. It's time to do it. <laughs> but uh, that, that was the impetus for this. So anyway, the, uh, you get 40 character generation points, and uh, there are eight attributes. Within each attribute, you can, uh, I'll show you a chart here, right here. You can go plus or minus five. That's it. So this red elf strength, you cannot make that strength a 16. The highest you can make it is a 15. Uh, size is a little different. You can't do more than 25% because it'd be really weird if you were twice as big as the natural person for your race. There are primary attributes, strength, intelligence, dexterity, charisma, perception, constitution, size, and willpower. And you can see how much it costs to raise each one of those for character generation points. <clears throat> All right, Crafty, have a good one, man. You mean it's Bessam? It's not new. It's, it's, not, it's not as pointy as Bessam. It's more of a hybrid. Uh, is it roll low like Mutant Chronicles 1st Edition? I don't know Mutant Chronicles 1st Edition, so I can't answer that. It's a single d20. Uh, it's a single d20, and you want to roll low. A 1 is a crit, or they call it an ace in this game, and a 20 is a blunder. 
Then, like a lot of games of the 80s, you have secondary attributes which are configured. Strength plus size divided by two. Uh, and, and it goes down the list here. You have luck points, of which you start with three. Luck points are like Edge in the old Mech Warrior game, or um, I'm trying to think what other games have a luck point. I think DCC is a luck point system, um, where you fall off a building and you go splat. You spend a, duck, uh, a luck point. You might not go splat. You're still hurt, but at least you're alive. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, move on here. Customize your character. Uh, this complexity thing is one of the things that I look at when I show you the character sheet. You'll see it on there that I think started to make the game a little more complicated than it needed to be. But remember, in the 80s, early 90s, this is how game design was done. I don't find it bad in any way. It's definitely a product of its era. Uh, and you know what I should do? Let me do this. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sharing my screen, so it's easily done. Just got to F11 that because I brought it. I have a character sheet ready to go. This is a filled in character sheet. You can see what the attributes and so forth look like. And here's where it's talking about you got I impossible and normal D difficult. Well, you have your base here of three, right? And we'll explain why maybe later. Your base of three. So a normal skill starts with three. However, a difficult skill starts with two. An impossible skill starts with zero because, you know, it's impossible. And an easy one, are there any easies here? E -E -E -E's. There's an E. There's an E. Fast talk is an E. So he's got a base three here in charisma. So this E is a four. That's, that's what this stuff is trying to say. All right, let's go back to... All right, well, the, the only two places I can find where you can watch the movie Wizards is on Google Play and Amazon. And okay. it is not Amazon Prime. So oh, you okay. have to, uh, both of them are the same price. You, you can rent it for four bucks or buy it for 10. But, All right. but you can buy the DVD from Amazon for $7 and 29 cents or Blu-ray for $11 and 71 cents. I have it on DVD. I got it a long, long time ago. I have it on DVD myself. You can also buy it on VHS tape for guess how much? <laughs> $40. 50 very close oh <laughs> actually i had it on on videotape also but i i have it on dvd mm. um i think i own it on amazon <laughs> Daddy, too. what's a dvd you son of a bitch you did it on purpose who said that oh <laughs> <laughs> nice uh hey actually isn't he older than us yeah all right so anyway and now this prior experience thing basically says, what's the background for your character? And I like how it states it here, where it's like, look, before you became an adventurer, you probably did something. You learned something in school, or you, or you, you were an apprentice to somebody, or you just traveled the wilderness, whatever. So Makes sense. We'll, we'll get to, to that. And by the way, I, again, I want to remind everybody, I am doing a very, very, very quick overview, because this isn't supposed to be a fundamentals of how to play, because most of you aren't going to be able to find the game, unless you get it in PDF format somewhere. Well, no, I mean, again, you, you can buy the actual game, too, from Amazon. Is it, When I looked, it said out of, uh, it's out of stock. Uh, no. Let me, oh. let me get to it. Wizards RPG. I thought I saw it. I, I looked it up, and uh, when I saw it, it said out of stock. Comes up Ravenloft. What, wh <laughs> why? I didn't ask for that. You want to type? You want to type in Ralph Bakshi's wizard, so you can see it on the screen here. So while you're doing that, is it worth? I would tell you that it's worth. The, I love the movie, but 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 yes, there you go. Bruce said it. It's a movie of its time. Have you seen the original? I guess the original Lord of the Rings that was half live action, half cartoon. Yeah. It's the same guy. It's the same thing. This one has a bit more um, lechery in it. <laughs> it definitely has World War II clips in it. And if you're afraid of a broken arm cross. <laughs> but that's who the bad guy is. I mean, that's I mean, his whole goal is to summon <laughs> summon Hitler. Wow. <clears throat> Two million years in the future. And, and that dude's still got a. 
So anyway, <laughs> uh, a word of warning to all players. Don't purchase any disadvantage you're not willing to roleplay. And by the way, it's, this isn't the only place it says it. I, lo I love that this game basically says, don't, don't just use these disadvantages as little, little crutches. No, 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 no. Oh, I was supposed to read page 12. Let me go back to page 12, sorry. I have notes here, I should follow them. So, yeah, l luck points can be used for simple survival. If a character gets fatally skewered, thrown off a building, or crushed by speeding tanks, if he spends one of his luck points, he'll survive the experience. Barely. But it's, it's a way of keeping yourself alive, and it costs a crap ton to get him back. So these aren't things you just kind of throw around willy-nilly. Pretty much you use them just to save your life. Uh, so for the story gamers out there, this is how you can implement your story and let somebody live. For the, for the, the pure RPG players out there who hate story, well, guess what? Your, the character had a little bit of luck. It, this is the character's plot armor right there. <laughs> um, see, customize the character, read paragraph four. Remember, when you purchase a disadvantage, you must roleplay it at all appropriate times. For example, if your character has an intense racial hatred for mutants, you can't just conveniently forget it and be friendly whenever you're outnumbered and outgunned. Or, we're gonna have one in the party just to do. If you watch the movie, that kind of happens. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Character traits are advantages, disadvantages, so we started looking at those. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but you can get some contacts. You can be ambidextrous, scroll down a little bit, fearless and fast. By the way, this is the main bad guy, Heathen Dog, of the movie, Black Wolf. He's the one trying to summon you-know-who. The bad guy from WW2? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, and then we have the disadvantages here. <laughs> I have this bad knees. <laughs> you have a problem with knees. That tend to hurt after any exercise or at the onset of bad weather. I mean, come on. How many times like, oh, damn, weather must be getting bad. Knees are aching today. <laughs> so I, I like that they added that in. My favorite one, though, is uh, where is it? Come on. Oh, they've got uh, hemophilia. So that's a great one. You got cut. You're going to die. Oh, here's my favorite one. <laughs> Lechery. For three character points, you are strongly attracted to the opposite sex and are easily misled by an attractive member. You often find yourself in compromising positions and not in a good way. It is possible that some of these situations could be quite dangerous, especially when the arch villain, uh, uh, sorry, especially when the arch villain the party is chasing happens to be an attractive member of the opposite sex. So that's three points. For eight points, you are rather obsessed and go to great lengths to get someone in bed. So it's a uh, every D and D bar scene <laughs> with a bar, yeah. with a bar, <laughs> <laughs> or an elf. Yeah. So well, yeah. To, to, to be fair, if uh, if an elf walks into a bar, the barmaids are hitting on him rather than the other way around. Yeah, probably or her, it, whatever. You get a minus three on all charisma skills when dealing with members of the opposite sex due to your continual leering and occasional drooling. It's a New York wow. City cat call. Yeah, so, so not only not only are you obsessed with the opposite sex, you have zero game. Is that <laughs> right? <what it> is? <laughs> ah. So nice. I'm, so anyway, I, I read that also because you know the the modern uh, gamers can be like, oh my god, that's so wrong. No, it's people, man. It's people. So okay, you have a weak stomach. Yeah, right, you're background. right. It's, it's out of stock <laughs> everywhere. Okay. If, if if you want this game, you're going to have to pirate it. Or That's eBay it. it. I'm sure it's on eBay. Everything's on eBay, right? Yeah. Okay, so well, no, e even on eBay, all I could find was the uh, was the uh, couple of oh. supplemental books and the GM screen. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't even find the main book on there. Well, I'm glad I've got my little baby right here. It's actually in really good condition still, too. Probably because we never played it. <laughs> I mean, we'll talk about it when we get into segment two, but... I don't tend to play a lot of games based on uh, current fiction, I guess you'd say. All right, anyway, let's go into, uh, we've got, we got some skills to talk about. Now, the way skills are done is you pick one primary skill set, or you pick one secondary and one tertiary skill set, or you pick three tertiary skill sets. So what does that mean? Well, I, I that? imagine, let me, let, me get, let me see if I can just intuit this. Okay. A primary skill set uh, differentiates, differentiates that from secondary or tertiary because you have a higher base level of competency. Yeah. 
then I mean, you have a secondary and tertiary, you have a you have a lower, lower and a lower still, or three tertiary sets is you have three skill sets, which is an awesome diversity, but you're not great at any of them. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. Um the die rolling the, I gotta tell you that for a low skilled character, the die roll system in this game is very punitive. <laughs> I mean you saw if that you, if you don't have a certain level of skill, the odds of you making it are pretty slim. I mean, let's look at this again. Look remember, this is on a D twenty and you have to roll this or lower. Oh, that's that's hurtful. And we'll get to that in a moment. So okay. For a long-term game, or for a short-term game, you're probably want to just going to have one primary and just hope that your niche is, you know, well-respected. But here's how it works. So let's just, because it's the first one here, we're, we don't have to look at any other ones. You have archaeologists, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to be an archaeologist, so, and you're like, I just, that's all I want to be, so you go primary. So you get these skills at these values. Sorry, I can't do one column, but at the primary values. But right. now let's say you want to be an archaeologist and an archer. Well, which one do you want your secretary, secondary? Which one do you want to be your tertiary? Well, let's just say, I know it's backward, but let's just say archaeologist, secondary, archer's tertiary. Well, now you would get the skills in uh, points in this column. You can see mm -hmm. my mouse, right? Yeah. Yep. And over here, you'd get it in this column. And then, of course, if you pick three for tertiary, you'd get them all in this column right here. Right. Okay. So Out of a, out of a D20, twos and ones is abysmal. I don't know why anyone would want a tertiary skill. <laughs> Well, if you have a pretty decent attribute already, it adds to it. So, well, yeah, maybe, but maybe. that much. Also, I would say that a good game master is going to tailor the adventure and, you know, make that success a little closer to 50%, or at least not make them crazy deadly for failing over and over and over again. But, yeah, uh, as, but even if you do tertiary, or sorry, primary, it's still a six. Even yeah. if you have a pretty decent stat, the best you're getting out of that is maybe 12 or 13. I'd have to look. So, yeah. I mean, and that's for, oh my god, the one kick-ass skill. So you might be wondering, why is small arms in here? Well, because there are guns in the game. Remember, it's 1940s technology, but it's magic versus technology. One side only uses magic, will not use technology. The other side uses technology, does not use magic. Hmm. And of course, magic are the good guys. I mean, the, the background for the story or for the movie explains why, but uh, okay, where are we now? Um, what page is this? I need to see. So this is going to be page 29, so we're not quite there yet. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, are you? So, background. Okay, so we don't have to. <clears throat> Here's that character sheet. I just ended up splitting it out for its own. Thingy majiggy. Example of play. This is a pretty good example of play, except for it doesn't go into any dice rolls at this point. It just kind of talks about what you can expect to see. Uh, a lot of games do this. Uh, Bessem did it as an example. So, and there are more characters. All right. So now we're at the basics. Base of the game. What are we rolling? What are, what are we trying to do? Well, first things first is you want to roll low. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you roll on a d20. A one is an ace. And uh, 20 is a blunder. And you can also have opposed rolls. The way that works in the quick fashion is Heathen Dog rolls versus his skill. I roll versus my skill. And whoever does better versus their own skill, that's the person who wins. Oh, okay. So if, if your skill level in this thing is 10 and mine is 8, you roll an 8, I roll a 2, I win because I made mine by a larger margin. I don't know if I like that term. <laughs> Di digestions. <laughs> By the way, um, as I'm going through this, if you see anything in chat, please just let me know. Okay. Um, but hey, hey, Aaron, and anybody who's joined, if I haven't seen what you posted, I apologize. I'm focused on the game side of it. Heathen the Dog will throw up on the screen if I need to be aware of something or just interrupt me. That's good. But I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, all right. So where am I? Da -da 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 -da. So anyway, it's it's a very simplistic system in that regard. And the fact that you want to roll low, one is the best, 20 is the worst, and if you have zero chances of success, a one is still a success. So okay. you say there's a chance. Yeah, 5%. Okay. Yep. So, and it talked about the blunders and so forth, opposed rolls that we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. 
skill descriptions. I'm not going to go through this, but you saw the character sheet, right? I, I said the character sheet. It's got a ton of skills on here. Each sure. one of these is talked about again in typical 1992 fashion. So now is uh, is that character sheet an example of a first level or yes. whatever equivalent character? Yes, this is the one in the book that okay, shows. Let, let, let's find his highest skill. I think it's a language skill, if I remember correctly. At 13. Yeah, I, I see the Elven at 13. Is that silence? It? Silence is pretty good. So pretty good at 50% chance of success. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it. So you want to look at silence? No, not really. I, oh. I, just, I just want to see what uh, what you're what you're you know, what you should look to expect on Fair a first level character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not expecting a lot. No, no, you're not expecting to succeed quite a lot. No. Now, to be fair, if you saw that skill list, it only showed like what eight skills per per skill category. Right. Yeah. Remember, the deduction has an N behind it, so that means it's normal difficulty. So even if you have zero points in it because your profession that you took doesn't have anything in it, you your, still give base, it a shot. your base is a three, so a normal skill is still a three. Got it. Now, obviously, so, he put three points into concealment. Sure. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Uh, I wasn't getting it before. Uh, for uh, we, When you use that example for the archaeologist, his, uh, his ancient history or lore was six. Mm -hmm. That's six plus his base to the yes. skill, and that would equal a nine. Now, is his base to the skill uh, based off of his stats? Yes. Okay, okay, Inte good. intelligence. Okay. So there's okay. a little chart. I did kind of gloss over it. Uh, I don't yep. know page okay. it's on, but there, but there is a chart that says if your stat is like one to five, get a plus one, uh, uh, you know, a six to ten. I could be completely wrong about that. It's plus two, but you get the idea. It's kind of like Dungeons yeah. Dragons, so on and yeah. so forth. Okay, okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> like I said, million foot overview here because, again, the chances of somebody playing this game are really low. I just want you to know it exists and it's a legit game. Okay, so next thing I want to do, by the way, that's a real character from the movie. Uh, the next page I want to go to is actually oh. she, <laughs> that, that fairy looks a little rapey. I don't know. She she looks like she's about to do something bad. I told you that this movie might you might not want to have your youngest children around. <laughs> there you go. Hey, imagery. demonetized already. Look at that. There's your imagery. That's a character from the movie. Oh, okay. So we are going to do this solitary adventure. Okay. But you don't get to see it. Oh, no. So actually, I'm going to stop stop sharing for just a second. Okay. So what's going to happen is, um, well, I should have, is there going to be, it's a choose your own adventure. Sure. However, you're supposed to roll the dice. Uh, of course, my dumbass didn't put the rolls up here. <laughs> there we go. So can I zoom in on that? God, I hope so. Okay, I can. So what we're going to do, oh, nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to share... The screen in case we need to bounce around but there's the die roller 1d20 right boom roll roll an 18 just to give an example and he the dog is going to pick what options happen and i am going to read this off i guess i will keep it on the screen like the choose your own adventure he okay. the dog your character is this character right here i'm ken you're ken hi everybody so actually you're dexter well you're ken your character's dexter <laughs> oh, okay so we start off start here Montgari envoys have located a goblin war chief who would be willing to compromise his mutant masters in exchange for some gold. According to intelligence, this particular goblin resents mutant domination over goblins and also has a personal grudge against Black Wolf. Well, that's, that's a dangerous proposition right there. You have been selected to courier some money into Scorch. Scorch, by the way, that's the evil land. There's Montgari, which is the good land. Scorch, which is the bad land. Will heathen dog live or die? Any bets? We'll find out. Uh, so with this money, the envoy will hopefully be able to buy some information from the greedy goblin chieflin. You have been given a locked leather pouch containing a handful of precious stones, and you've been ordered to take the stones to the envoy deep inside Scorch. Your route has taken you through the wastelands at the edge of Scorch, and now you must cross a river which cuts through a small gorge. Scouting for a place to cross, you've come across a bridge. There's a wooden trestle bridge with a guardhouse on this end of it. There is no guardhouse on the other side of the bridge. The area around is covered with scrubby brush. It's a clear night with a full moon. 
and only the noise is and the only noise is that sorry i thought i saw a big spam pop in my eyeball <laughs> it is a clear sorry it is a clear night with a full moon and the only noise is that of the water rushing through the gorge below okay so your options are do you want to stop and watch the bridge for a while do you want to approach the bridge do you want to go into the gorge or do you want to turn around and go home? <laughs> <laughs> I could just turn around and go home. Yeah. That's uh, probably the best option for life. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm all alone, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop and watch for a while. I'm, okay, I'm, so I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to see how this guardhouse reacts to people coming up to it before I go up to it. 75. Oops, sorry, two, seven, four. You pause. Eyes and ears alert for anything I miss. Make a roll against your alertness skill. Okay, so what's your alertness skill? Uh, I, by the way, I don't know where all the... Okay, so it's seven. You need a seven or less. Okay. Doesn't say any modifiers. Doesn't say any modifiers, does it? Nope. Okay, so we go to rolls. You ready? Yep. Oh! Uh, wait, what? Natural 20. Oh... Why is, what is that? I thought it was a natural one. I don't know one. why it says one. Why does it say one if it says natural 20? I don't know. That's weird. Is that, wait. Well, you botched. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> it's confusing. Because the first one actually well, said the number. Oh, no. The, oh, a natural 20. Okay. Yeah. It's 20. And then, it, and then it yeah. tells you, no, no, this is a natural 20. Like yeah. I didn't already fucking know. Thank you. I, I want to know what that one means. That's weird. I don't know anyway. what that one means. Like, like you rolled one Oops. natural 20. You suck. So that is awesome. Um, <laughs> you botch. If you roll a 20, go to 74. Well, that's close. Let's do it. Let's do it. Straining to focus all your attention on the bridge. You don't notice the stealthy approach of two mutant guards. In fact, you only become aware of them when you hear them cock their submachine guns. And one of them says, freeze, you bloodthirsty animal warmonger. Do you surrender or do you run? Surrender. Okay, they, so. they got me dead to rights, man. I mean, the, the, this is this is where you, this is where you jar jar pigs. <laughs> this isn't a good sign. I give up. You I get captured the by end. the mutants. <laughs> they divide they divide the gems amongst themselves and beat you up a lot because they don't have a television to watch. As they place you in shackles, you hope that Weehawk, main character from the movie, by the way, will send someone to rescue you soon. You've heard the tales of radiation sickness that people get if they stay in scorch too long. The end. <laughs> Well, whoever whoever in their heads bet that I wasn't going to make it, you win. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh yep. man. So okay. Wait, wait, no, no, no. J j let's let's see. So let's re-roll that. If no, 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 we're not going to re-roll. Okay. You rolled a natural twenty. You mm -hmm. botched. I chose to surrender. What if I ran? Okay, that's fair enough. We can do that. Uh, what number is that? Seventy-four. Seventy-five. If you run, go to seventy-six. Okay, seventy-six. You cry out in pain as one of the mutant guards shoots you in the back, and you collapse on the ground, stunned. Wincing in pain, you try to regain your feet, but your muscles don't seem to want to work. Then you hear hobnailed jackboots crush the grass next to your ear. A cold steel barrel presses between your shoulder blades, and a harsh voice says, Get up, you stinking yellow fairy! Get up before I blow you away for killing Fritz! Oh my god, Fritz! They killed Fritz! Oh my god, they killed what? Fritz! That's I didn't movie. kill anybody! What are you talking about? It's in the movie. Go to 87. <laughs> Go to 87. <laughs> it's one of the funnier parts of the movie, though. All right. Oh, well, there you go. You get captured by the mutants and divide the chance. <laughs> so the same thing happens. Okay, so so, so, so basically that rolling botch that botch was ended my game. Yes, it did. Yeah, that one botch ended my game. That, personally, I don't like that. Well, okay. Again, choose your own adventure. They couldn't have everything under the sun here. I mean, to be fair, it just said that they shoot you. No rolls, well, no yeah, anything. Yeah. They, they shot me, but 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 then it ended up being exactly the same as if I surrendered. The, the idea of this is just to say this is how the game is played. Remember, choose your own adventure books were pretty popular back then. This yeah. might have been as they were fading out and so forth. But you get the idea. I thought this was going to be a lot longer. I'm kind of glad it wasn't. But uh, you, <laughs> but the point being is, look, you got a hundred. Was it a hundred choices here? Oh, Ninety nine things that could possibly uh, that you could read. You could go through it on your own. See, that wasn't that hard. You died really easily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on to. Uh, well, no, no, no. I didn't die in either one. I I probably was either rescued later with intense radiation sickness or died of acute radi radiation poisoning. So yeah, one of those two things happened, <laughs> and and I failed my mission and lost a small fortune in gems. Yay! <laughs> They're gonna be really. 
really just out there trying to rescue you, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because they want those gems back. Hey, how did the scouts that were past the bridge, you guys see him? No? Oh, shit, he stole our money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, uh, that's a solitary adventure. So now we're going to go to combat. Oh, look at that. Necron 99. Uh, so you roll initiative. Actually, let's, let's start here. Game Master decides the action of NPCs, player declare, players declare their actions, actions are resolved, and any additional bookkeeping. Typical game stuff, right? Combat turns. Starts with surprise. Are you seeing anything different than pretty much any other role-playing no. game so far? No. Pretty surprise standard is handled first, and then after <laughs> surprise happens, the people who have surprise will get to go. The people who don't have surprise... Will people who are surprised will probably number one not not get to go and have some kind of penalty attack attached to them because they were surprised and then the next time so any kind of actions happen there's a, there's a caveat to, to that and what? first of all I want to say Pixaro Fritz the cat was done by Ralph Bakshi yes that movie traumatized me as a kid <laughs> I guess that's damn near yeah anyway <clears throat> that's gross uh, but uh, but. I guess he just likes the name Fritz, but this Fritz was different than Fritz the Cat. <laughs> uh, now, there's, here's the caveat difference to that. And that is, surprise characters get a minus 10 penalty to initiative. Oh. It's still technically possible to go first. Just highly, highly, highly unlikely. Sure. Okay. On the second round, surprise characters still have a minus 5 to initiative. Oh, now, what, okay. All what right, I like I about it. this, remember when I told you that I like an initiative system that has some sort of momentum factor to it? Yep. That's kind of it right there. So I'm not surprise saying Surprise has a momentum factor, yes. Yep. So I uh, just wanted to point that out, that surprise works a little differently, than, but it's still just a D20 roll. It's still a simple. You don't have to figure too many weird things out. Uh, Non-combat actions, I like this paragraph. Normally characters in combat will be busy bashing or shooting each other and will not bother with details like finishing their dinner or catching up on their eating. <laughs> Fair. That's a Paragraph that didn't wasn't needed didn't need to exist, but it's funny that it does. Yes. So, anywho, uh, it kind of talks about other things you can do. Now, here's movement. If there's one complaint about the game that I've actually heard from people who've read through this book, and this is years and years and years ago, people didn't like the way movement worked. It's a simplistic form of movement. Get over it. It's not realistic. We're just going to leave it at that. <clears throat> um, movement can cause shock damage to you if you sprint. Shock damage is like SDC. It's just you know. Or, or mental for some other games and so forth. It's fatigue. fatigue. Right. Uh, you have encumbrance. This is where things start to get a little... I don't want to say nonsensical. There's a bunch of bookkeeping when it comes to uh, your weapons and armor. Initiative 16, initiative 15, initiative 15. Da uh, well, I mean, damage is obviously going to be different. But your armor, your weapons and so forth have different initiatives. And you have to figure that in. You have different speeds. Uh, does this person have any armor? Uh, no real armor, so th this person doesn't have to worry about the armor stuff. But there's, there's speed encumbrance and so forth. So, yeah. I, this is where, if you don't have it written down, it's kind of like Palladium in this regard. Palladium's really good about encompassing pretty much any situation. Would you agree? Yes. However... The character sheet isn't good at encompassing all those situations. I had to make yeah, my all, own. All of the variables of yeah. that of those situations. Yes. This is kind of the same. Not nearly that in it's not that bad, but it's it's similar to this. So it's one of those things that uh, it can be a bit disconcerting. It's not simplistic, especially by modern standards. But look, again, it's second grade math. Take a moment to fill out your character sheet properly and you'll be fine. Making attack, so dodging. A defender has a dodge skill of five or greater. He gets to subtract his dodge bonus from the attacker's attack skill. I don't. So, I don't have that. I have you a didn't four. Have, you didn't have a dodge? No, no. I have a four. Oh, go, uh, go, go up to armor. Go up to armor. Oh, dodge Let's skill see, four. Dodge yeah. skill four. Is it down so, here also? Yeah, there it is. Four. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's normal. Yep. So you wouldn't have a bonus. Nope. God, dang it! Stop clicking the wrong one. So I, I got shot. You got shot. <laughs> I got captured. Yep. That's what happened. Well, what, <laughs> So what it would do, though, is it would actually take this point would come away from the attacker's skill. So you're actually affecting the attacker. Why is that? That sounds confusing. It's because it actually just makes it one die roll still. Instead of having to do all this other stuff, it's like, okay, my attack skill is 12. Ah, because of his dodger, his attack skill is actually 11 roll. 
did you beat an 11? No. Or, you know, I got exactly a 12. I hit no. His dodge skill says you got, you need an 11. Ah, crap. So, uh, again, like I said, some people might consider that a backward way of thinking about it, but it makes sense when you, when you put it into action. It, 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 it represents a, a trained and or extinctual, you know, dodging and weaving and yes. whatever in combat. Yeah. Yep. And it's natural. Like, like that isn't, that isn't a, it's right. not, it's not really a skill. It's just, you know, what, what you get. And there are ways you can turn it into even a, a better dodge and so forth. But again, sure. uh, of course, it's got rules as typical attacking from behind is a plus five bonus. So if you start thinking tactically, that D20 isn't so bad anymore. Hmm. I mean, that's 25% right there. Uh, um, each missile weapon has a rate of fire, so you can fire some more than others. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, like I said, it, it, this isn't a an in-depth overview because it's just not the type of game you're not going to be running out and playing it at your table chances are and if you are well hey great watch the movie first watch the movie first get the tone okay what's that get the tone there you go uh healing 75 Yes, oh, and they have grenade damage and so forth. Uh, basically, you throw a grenade. Um, if it hits, let's say it's a six-die grenade, uh, for every yard away, it's one die less. Uh, damage bonuses, aces, effects of parry, armor. Uh, here are just some, you know, hit points of uh, inanimate objects. Sure. Explosives, kind of already talked about healing. <laughs> I love the healing. So, healing, this is going to... Oh, by the way, anybody who plays DCC is probably going to be okay with this. Everybody else is going to be like WTF when I get into it. So, uh, do, 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 do. it says magic. Read the, the... Oh, no, we're not a magic one. Healing. So, that's something fine. so uh, the recovery chart. Approximately every two and a half minutes, the character receives a number of shock points, the fatigue, equal mm -hmm. to the recovery attribute. So, where's recovery on this thing? It should be down here. 12. Okay. okay. So you have 30 shock points and you can recover 12 every two and a half minutes. So Sounds fine. Basically, you rest for five, you know, five, seven minutes. You got your energy back. You can go. A character only recovers hit points while resting, unconscious, or take on a light load. Shock points are recovered automatically. And, oh, uh, proxy... Where is it? Uh, also, once per month. There it is. Character receives a number of hit points equal to the recovery. So, how many hit points do you have total? Ten. Well, good news is <laughs> you're going to recover that within a month. Yay. <laughs> but what about not? No, this is not the right page. It's actually 131. I'm on 76 right now. This is your recovery chart. Okay. So you had a recovery of 12, right? Yep. So every three days you get one hit point back. Natural and, healing. Oh, it, it, except for day 29 and 30 when I get... Yeah, yeah. It, it comes up... Actually, no. They're, no, it's the same. Well, yeah. it skips here also. Yeah, well, no, okay, okay. It's, it's either every other day or every third day. Yeah. yeah. If you had a recovery of five, well, you'd get one every six days. Now, this is also true for your stamina and so forth. It's just it happens in minutes instead of days. Right. That's in case you didn't want to do math. Okay. Shirji. Which is, uh, well, let's go first aid. Uh, first aid is field medicine and is primarily concerned with keeping a patient from getting worse and mitigating damage as much as possible. Characters with first aid skill can treat their comrades right on the field of battle, possibly while a fight is still going on. It takes about a minute to give someone some basic first aid, assuming you've got a kit handy or the wound isn't too complex to treat. A character succeeds with his first aid skill use, the patient recovers one hit point back. In addition, the patient receives a number of shock points equal to the amount by which the practitioner made the roll. So if you made the roll mm -hmm. by four, you get four points back. Okay, I'm not going to sure. go into that anymore, but I just want to give an example. Shuji is not field medicine, but nursing. Requires days to work and concerns itself with the body's natural healing process. Now we now the, the wounds and the... Uh, that chart come into play. So wait, th this is uh, the the original chart was recovery. This one is recovery with care. Yes. Okay. Well, when a surgeon cheats a character, have the surgeon make a skill check. 
For every point by which surgeon beats the required skill number, the patient's effective, re effective recovery attribute is increased by one. So let's just say you made it by three, okay? So my, my recovery would instead of 12 be 15. Yes, and since you only have 10 hit points, <laughs> let's say you took nine points of damage, so you're not dead, it'd only take you 18 days. Okay. Vice the uh, 23 days. I mean, that's still five days quicker. Yeah. But for anybody who's used to playing like D&D 5th edition, this is going to kill them. Yep. <laughs> this isn't an eight-hour recovery. Uh, but it makes your hit points, when you start taking real hit point damage, especially since you only have 10 of them, you really think about it. And mm -hmm. I like, the, personally, I like that in games. Okay, da -da -da -da, the brink of death. You know, yeah, you, know, you can die. Example combat. It, gives, it kind of goes through a full example of combat. I read it. It's actually really well done. Uh, one of the better ones I've seen, because it talks about what everybody rolled, each character individually, why, and so on and so forth. So that's really well done. And the last one that we're going to go into with any depth is magic. And then this segment will be over. Um, we're not going to talk about the lands or the game mastering stuff and so forth. I'll quickly you know, scroll through it so you can see it. But uh, so magic, I have on here, read the structure of magic on page 77. There it is right there. Magic, like technology, has no set structure. There are only laws and guidelines. And since magic is an individual and intangible art, there is not nearly as much standardization as magic spells as there is in, say, rifles produced by mutants. Each character can make up any spell he wishes, and once he creates a spell, he can cast it as often as he likes, and can teach the spell to others. Wow. Okay. Creation of the spells is governed by a variety of factors. These are outlined on page 81. I did not go through that process, because I just want to talk about it and show it. So don't ask me any questions directly on that. Well, that, we'll that, that's fine, but it, it, it doesn't seem like there's any kind of spell points or mana or anything we'll, like we'll, that. We'll show, we'll show you. Okay. So, second paragraph under the skill of magic. When you're attempting to cast a magic spell, you must make a roll against your magic skill. If you make it, the spell works. Otherwise, it fails. If you blunder, unusual things may happen. Whether you succeed or fail in casting the spell, you may lose some spirit points. There you go. That's your answer. Oh, spirit Tem points. Those are yours. Okay. Temporarily, as your soul becomes exhausted from the effort. And the quick version of it is this. They've given the four different possibilities for the rolls right here. If you roll less than or equal to the spells, okay, if you roll less than or equal to the spells threshold, which is going to be less than your magic skill also, then you spend one skill point. Okay? Spirit point. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I think I read that one wrong. Uh, he succeeds in the cast, loses a number spirit point equal to the number he rolled on the dice. Aces can result in increased effect. Uh, for example, character casting a 12-point spell and rolls a three, it loses three spirit points. I'm sorry, I, it, I had the one wrong. Okay. It's three. But that's based on your roll. So if you roll really low, you could expend just one point. That's why I think I had that in my head because I was thinking that yesterday. Um, if the roll is higher than the spell threshold but less than or equal to the magic skill, then, for example, a character with magic skill of 10 casts a 5-point spell. He rolls an 8. The spell works and he loses 5 points. It is the cost of the spell. Sure. The regular cost. Got it. Yep. If it is higher than magic skill but less than or equal to twice the magic skill, it, sp it fails, and you only spend one point. You had to put a little exertion in there. Sure. If the roll is over twice as high as the magic skill, so let's say you have magic skill of five, you roll an 11, uh-oh, or here, the example is uh, magic skill eight, uh, rolls a 19, it's greater than twice the skill, so he loses all seven points because it's a seven-point spell. Okay. Again, I know some modern players might be like, that's difficult to figure out. It's not. You know the power of your spell. You just have to see how well you rolled. And it goes into opposed casting. Focuses. Foci are actually kind of important, or can be important, especially if uh, you become, uh, uh, you need it. <laughs> Addicted to one, we'll say. How spells are made. Inventing a new spell. And, uh, da -da -da -da, where does it talk about uh, spirit points? Spirit points. Inventing a new spell, of course. Uh, where was it? Spirit points is up. You missed it. Well, that's recovering a spirit point. Nope, that's that's part of above. There we go. Nope, nope. A little higher. A little higher. No, this, where we're going, this is back into spell casting. I'm looking for spell creation, which starts ah, it here. It should be right here. I didn't, I didn't see anything except for recovering spell points, not how to get spell points or how spell points are calculated. Well, 
So these costs are spell levels, or what was it, uh, what do they call it up here? Uh, 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 where is it? Magic skill has a five point, okay, five points, so there's not levels, it's points. So, depending on, this is kind of like a champions type thing. Mm -hmm. If you want your spell to cover a three yard square, it costs two, two points. Point spell. Yep. And then you add on the duration, maybe you want it to last an hour. Now it's a total now, of three. Now, again, it says it only applies to spells which are temporarily and un 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 unusual. God, I can't read. Never mind, you can read it right there. <laughs> there are limitations to what you can put on things. Right. You don't put it on a, a fireball. But you get the, you get the idea. You, you build the points, and then you cast them. Obviously, the, the spells, the higher point cost, are going to be harder to cast. And cost more spell points. <laughs> all right. That's really all I want to talk about. It's got some example spells in here. Says, uh, Flim Flim says, this reminds him of Mage. Oh man, then if this reminds you of Mage, I really need, need to do a Mage magic segment. <laughs> I really do, because this not should not remind mage. you of Mage. This should but, not. But, but, I, but I, get the, so I get the idea. Much more. I, I get the idea in terms of you get to make your own spells. Yeah, that's about After it. The, I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, at the elementary level, elementary school level, then yeah, okay, you, you, can, you can compare them. But beyond that, no, there is no comparison. So ultimately, it was not my goal to give you a complete rundown of the game. I've said that multiple times. I'm saying it again for anybody who's like, my God, that overview is just really bland. Well, it was intentionally... I just wanted to show that the game exists and that it's a legit game. Based off of a movie. Based off of a movie. These, by the way, the, oh, here we go. Let, let's, let's look at the characters. These are actually all the... Oh, these are Rapey Fairy. Go back oh, down on. to the Rapey Fairy. Hold, hold on, we'll get there. So oh. these are all characters in the actual game. Or in the movie. There she is. Oh, she gets really rapey at one point. I didn't notice it when I was younger, but when I was watching it the other day, she stands, she's like imprisoned and she shoots this like rainbow beam out at these little miniature elves. By the way, Mark Hamill's in this movie. It's his first oh. acting role ever. Uh, he dies. But uh, uh, <laughs> she's shooting it right out of her cooch, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. This guy, yeah, he's in the movie. Oh, yeah. He needs some cardio. <laughs> right? This, this little dude's in the movie. Little? He doesn't seem little. He's not that big. I don't remember seeing this guy in the movie. Maybe I just missed Robot it. 12. They killed Fritz. <laughs> Major characters. This is the main good guy. This is Avatar. Okay. Would you like to see what one of his uh, traits is? Sure. <laughs> Lechery, of course. Yep. <laughs> and he's the good guy. Yeah. This is Black Wolf. I trust no one, not even myself. Well, there you go. Yep, that's great. So, Necron 99, also known as Peace. There you go. El Eleanor is the name of the Rapey Fairy, and Weehawk is the other elf and so forth. So, all right. That's, uh, that's it. That's all I really want to show. Well, I, I, so it's going to show this as well. They do have uh, land books. There's... Uh, yeah, I the land of Scorch, which would probably yeah. explain why it's so irradiated. There's a little dragon, dude. Anyway, I just I only have this here to say, look, they've got realm books as well. So if you want to get more into the realms, some of these names are weird. Oh, the Hotlands. Oh, the Great Depression. The Greater Crater. <sighs> as opposed to the Lesser Crater. Okay. Right. So, anywho, it goes into it. You got to, uh, you know, you, you can figure out how to make uh, creatures and so on and so forth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, like I said, I did this because Grim mentioned it <laughs> on one of his uh, videos, and I was like, my God, you know, I, I, for some reason, like the last year and a half, this game and movie has come up multiple times for me. And I'm like, I gotta talk about it at one point. Like, when I tell people, I was like, I've got that RPG, like, shut up, it's a movie. No, it's an RPG. Shut up, it's a movie. It's an RPG. Here you go. Look, real pages. <laughs> so, what do you think, uh, what, overall? What did you think? You know, we never put up the segment one banner. Nope. Or it's the subscribe. Fault. Never put the subscribe over my face either. Well. My did... face needs a subscribe. There. Thank you. There it is. Now, uh, <laughs> I thought that uh, that the, the game seemed pr pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you, you kind of glossed over the encumbrance thing, which I think is going to be the most problem initially. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, if somebody really wanted specifics, yeah, I get that. Yeah, get yeah, yeah. That. Uh, but I, uh, from what you said, I believe that the 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 encumbrance of weapons, armor, and equipment is only going to be a factor once you have to change your character sheet. Once you have everything yes. written down, it seems like everything is going to be pretty clear cut. Right. The the main, the really the only thing it affects, well, not the only thing, it affects your movement speed and it affects your initiative rolls. Right. Right. Beyond that, everything seems uh, roll, roll equal to a less threshold type deal. I mean, uh, seems pretty it. I mean, you have you have spell points, you cast spells, you lose spell points. I imagine you you gain spell points back through the, your recovery attribute, just like you you gain shock points back through your recovery attribute. I imagine that that's how it works. Um, you, you glossed over it, but I, I, I don't I don't see that uh, working any any differently. I mean, you already have a recovery statistic. Might as well use it. Right. So it's probably how it works. So, uh, black, yeah, the Black Cauldron. I played the Sierra game of the Black Cauldron. You believe it or not, I played the Sierra game of the Black Cauldron. I still have never seen 